Hi, my name is Sai, and this is how I play Quake Live. The theory is that if a mouse can work for me in Quake, there's a good chance it will perform well in other first person shooters. But remember, there's no such thing as perfect, and we all want different things. So once I show you what the mouse is capable of doing, it'll be up to you to decide if it's right for your needs. This review is about the ZA series by Zowie. I have two sizes, the ZA13, which is the small, and the ZA12, which is the medium. They're ambidextrous mice with 3310 optical sensors, guano switches on the buttons, and they're lightweight. Those are the four most important factors to a mouse. Shape, buttons, sensor, and weight. But the order of those depends on the games that you play. We'll get onto the four main points, but first, Zowie mice are known for having no gimmicks. Even with their packaging, it's just a plain box with a mouse inside. Which I think is great, although I would like to see the cable wrapped in circles rather than folded. At least they do include replacement mouse feed though. The mice are just plug and play, no software, which is great for people going to lands and competitions. Personally, I think some software would help, but they do allow you to change some settings by holding in certain buttons as you plug them in. By request, to change the liftoff distance, hold in mouse 4 with the others. So mouse 4 with the left gives one DVD on a hard pad and under one DVD on a cloth, including the Zowie GSR and GTFX. Mouse 4 with the right button, barely one DVD on a hard pad, but one DVD on a cloth. That includes the GSR, but not the GTFX. Mouse 4 with the left and right button, will give you one DVD on a hard pad and under one DVD on a cloth, including the GSR and GTFX. You can only have one set of side buttons active. The default is for right-handed, but you can switch it for left. You can also change the polling rate, and how to alter both of these things is in the manual, so I won't go into it here. Lastly, there are four DPI settings with colors attached. 400 is red, 800 is pink, 1600 blue, and 3200 green. But these two mice only have the LED on the base. Now, the shape. It's important to know your hand size and grip style for this. My hand is about 18cm base to tip, and 9cm across from thumb to knuckle of little finger. The button slope is steep, which means this mouse isn't designed for fingertip grip. The hump is toward the back, making it more suited to palm and claw grip, although I found the hump doesn't quite feel full in the hand. And there are very minor comfort grooves in the buttons, which seem to suit all grip styles. Between the thumb and fingers, the grip width of the ZA12 is 5.4cm, with a base length of 11.8, and 5.2 and 11.5 on the ZA13. This is a bit off the 2 to 1 ratio that I usually like, but they still feel in proportion and comfortable to aim. The backs are 6.3cm and 6cm, and the fronts are 5.5 and 5.3, and they're both about 4cm high. So the differences are small, but they are quite obvious when holding each. I've had both plugged in and never mistook one for the other. A safe shape is one that allows for multiple grip styles, one that doesn't dictate exactly where you put your fingers. The sides of these are quite flat, which is great, and just enough curve to allow you to grip them when lifting them up. There's also an extra ledge on the front here, so if your fingers extend to there, it should help. But a word of caution on these, there are buttons on both sides, meaning if you get the wrong size, despite Zowie's excellent design methods, there is a chance that you could accidentally click them in. So which one should you choose? Which one fits you? That really depends on how you hold the mouse and your hand size. For the ZA12, remembering the hump doesn't fill the hand, I'm going to recommend this for a hybrid palm and claw grip, or just claw grip for people with hands between 18.5 and 20 centimeters. For the ZA13, again hybrid and claw, 18 to 19.5 centimeters. Going by these measurements, the ZA11 might be good for 19 to 20.5. Again though, my hand is going to be different to yours, and most people don't seem to have the problems with buttons on the right like I do. So you could probably alter each total by a centimeter either way. That's the best I can do for now. Let me know in the comments if you have one, and tell me what grip style you're using, and what your hand size is. The weights are very similar, the ZA12 being about 86 grams, and the ZA13 being about 84. And they feel fairly well balanced, maybe a bit toward the back though. Moving on to the buttons, here's a listen to all the clicks. Now, I can only speak for the copies that I have, but based on these, the ZA12 left and right buttons feel a bit harder to press in and have a lower sound. They're both fairly stiff, as is common with the Zowie mice, so they may not be great for mobile, but according to feedback, they could be good for jitter clicking. Definitely good for first person shooters though. 
NAS 3 feels easy to press in on the ZA12, and both have a fair bit of tactile feedback. The scrolls are not the best for browsing, but they should be good in-game. The side buttons have good tactile feedback, and a small amount of travel. Compared with other mice, I can achieve about the same amount of clicks in 10 seconds, so there's no problem with speed, although it did feel a bit harder doing it with them. Overall, a pretty good performance, and as expected, good for FPS, maybe decent for mobile. Next, these mice use the 3310 optical sensor, one of the best around. There's a lot of mouse testing around with statistics and machines giving answers. I'm going to give you the human test, so you know how the sensors perform in-game for human hands. And I use Quake Live because I am most familiar with it. After playing for over 17 years, I can usually figure out if a mouse has a problem, or if it's just something in the game. Starting off with some rocket jumping, this is a very simple test, but a good indication of how the mouse performs in general. It seems to be doing quite well. In the sniper test, I zoom right into FOV1 and start with pixel by pixel movements at 1600 dpi. And this is tracking as expected. I tested this on all other dpi settings too and had the usual results. And moving the mouse across the pad as fast as I can, I can't make it spin out. Testing for acceleration and deceleration, I'm going to move the mouse across the pad again very quickly, then I'm going to track back slowly. and this mouse has returned to the position, meaning it has another. And the sensor is as responsive as the other 3310s, so overall, a great performance. In the line test, I couldn't find any sensor rattle, jitter, skipping, or angle snapping, although I did notice the scroll wheels are a bit loose when you turn them upside down. I used too many mice to comment on durability, but I can give an indication of how well it's made. When tapping it, there is some rattle, which appears to be the scroll wheel and side buttons, and when shaking it, there is some kind of light rattle, not sure what that is. It seems fairly well made though, the rattles are very quiet, nothing to be concerned about. The materials are a smooth, high quality plastic and they feel solid. I'm not sure how good they will be with sweaty hands, but the shape is fairly safe, so I'm hoping it'll be fine. The cable is 2 meters long and a smooth, flexible rubber. I think Zowie mice have the best cables, and they go well with the Zowie Kamade mouse bungee. There are two large mouse feet on the base, and they glide smoothly. So they're the important factors of the mouse, but now for a personal opinion. Can I aim with them? In the three main aim styles, being prediction, tracking, and sniper, I felt fairly confident with each, but it wasn't anything special. I enjoyed using them, but with mice like the Zowie EC2A out there, it's very unlikely that I would use these. Still, for people that are looking for this kind of shape, they still have that Zowie quality we've come to expect, so they should be good. As always, recommended for first-person shooters and possibly mobile, but the general consensus is that the buttons need to be separated from the main shell and also to use Omron switches. Those two changes could boost sales for MOBA and FPS. Final thought, it's a good mouse, but I'm going to stick with the EC2A. If I had to choose a size between the ZA12 and ZA13, I would choose the ZA13 because it's smaller and easier to aim, in my opinion. Hope that helps. Special thanks to Zowie for sending these out for review. If you want to support the channel, you can buy them using the Amazon links for overseas and Mwave links for Australia. Subscribe for more reviews and gaming videos. Thanks for watching, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.